Well, now, what if I felt like preaching a long time? Well, I don't. But I might get to feeling that way. So I wanted to know whether I should uh, obey what I felt. One thing sure, I don't know for sure what I'm going to preach about, but I'm not going to preach on giving. Because <laughs> I tell you, that's already over with. <laughs> Glory to God. But oh, aren't you glad for that victory? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. You know, I used to get under bondage about preaching some great sermon. But you know, it's so much better on your system when you don't have to be under bondage. I just know that whatever I'm going to say tonight is going to be good. If I take it out of the Bible, you know it's going to be good. God's going to bless you and help you. But uh, I just thrilled by this film. Amen. Wasn't that great? Amen. Yes. You know, back down a few years ago, we saw the young people storming through our country. But thank God Jesus began to work. Yes. And out of all that confusion rose an army of young people doing something for Jesus. Well, I think about that film, think about the offering, think about the mood you're in. Say, now, Jesus, what can I feed these little sheep? They seem to be pretty full. <laughs> of course, I see a few old goats. <laughs> they always need something. But maybe I'll just preach a sermon or a pre I mean, talk a little bit. I'm not going to preach a sermon. Keep on talking, I'll talk myself out of preaching. <laughs> From 1 Timothy, just uh, uh, exhort you a little while tonight. Uh, you just have to recognize my ministry is in the Holy Ghost and the baptism and the gifts and all of that. And, and uh, no matter which way the service goes, I just have to kind of bring it back to what I'm called to preach about. Amen. You know, if you stay in your own stream, you're all right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Mine's not the charismatic renewal, it's the Holy Ghost and fire. Tell you, brother, when I first heard the word, word glossolalia, I said, well, what in the world is that? And I had it and didn't know it. <laughs> I just want to be sure you don't go to sleep on me. <laughs> All right, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate on these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear unto all. And then turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. <clears throat> he says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance, that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. And I want to talk a little while to you wonderful people who are saved and filled with the Holy Ghost about stirring up the gift or the gifts of God that God has ordained to work in your life. Let me be all right? Yes. You know this Holy Ghost revival is great. Can you say amen? Yes. I'm glad I'm alive. I'll tell you, God began to rain down the Holy Ghost. That's why we could see this film tonight. That's why these young people had courage to go over there and do this. God is moving by the Holy Ghost today in a marvelous, wonderful way. And I'm glad to be right in the middle of it. Amen. You know, I, 
Thank God that the gifts of the Holy Ghost are for everybody. You know, some people, devil tell them, you were behind the door when the gifts were handed out. God's not going to use anybody like you, but I have news for you. God says uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the gifts of the Holy Ghost are divided to every man, every woman, every individual, individually as he wills. Everybody ought to have some kind of supernatural enablement and gift operating in their life. Gift of the word of wisdom, the gift of the word of knowledge, the gift of discerning of spirits, the gift of tongues, interpretation of tongues and prophecy, the gift of miracles, the gift of faith, the gift of healing, gifts of healing. Now some of those are going to work in your life if you've got the Holy Ghost. Oh, it's so important. I was down in the deep, dark hole of tradition, bound by a million chains, unable to get out as a Baptist preacher. Somewhere I knew there was light. Somewhere I knew there was victory. But I couldn't bring myself to believe uh, in these things that we're talking about tonight. Do you know what blasted me out of the dark hole of tradition? A little girl in an Assembly of God church in Baytown, Texas, where I pastored a Baptist church, she got under the power of the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues and a missionary from Africa arose and began to listen to her and said, this child is speaking in the language of the tribe that I minister to in Africa and she is praising the name of Jesus. Brother, when I heard that report, it broke my chains, it blasted me out, it made me a believer in one, one moment's time. And all that I ever do, as little it is as it may be, that child will have a part in the ministry that God has helped me bless people with. One move of a supernatural enablement. One move of the Holy Ghost in the life of a child. All the gifts of the Holy Spirit are important. And it's important that you know what God is trying to do in you. I like what Brother Myers said. He said, uh, find out what God is doing in this world and jump right in the middle of it. Let me go one step further. Find out what God is trying to do in you and cooperate with what God's doing. You know, when I got the Holy Ghost and found out the gifts were real, I tell you, I just worried God to death. <laughs> I mean to tell you, I just walked up and down in my study. I said, give me the gifts, give me the gifts, give me the gifts. Not one, not two, every one of them. I want them all. I was a hog. But brother, I want to tell you, uh, I, I had a desire. I'd been dry long enough. I'd been, uh, I, I'd been uh, 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 left out long enough, brother. I wanted all of them. And I, I tell you, I'd just pray there and pray there and pray there. I didn't know what God would do. I, I'd really, in my mind, as I prayed and sought, and I said, Lord, give me that gift of faith and miracles and healings and prophecy and tongues, interpretation. I just named them all, and I just begged uh, day by day. I wanted the gifts. I wanted the gifts. I wanted the gifts. How many of you want the gifts? Well, I, I, I tell you, I don't, here's sort of what I thought had happened. I figured that as I was kneeling there that God probably would send a little angel about the size of a fairy and he'd have a little magic wand in his hand with a star on it and he'd come and ding me on the head. <laughs> and he'd say, ding, I now give you the gift of faith. Or ding, I give you, and I just could picture stars coming out of my head, you know. <laughs> That's literally the truth. I, I kind of had that idea. I can imagine Gabriel, God said, Gabriel, look down yonder at that ding-a-ling, won't a ding. <laughs> I don't preach so serious late at night. I'm just gonna have, you're just going to have to go along with me tonight. Is that all right? But you know, you know, God said to me one day, he said, well, now, now, well, he, I say he said, I mean, he impressed me. And that's the way God talks most of the time. He said, now what would I do, what would you do with the gifts if I gave them to you here in this little room you got and call an office? 
He said, if I gave you prophecy, there's nobody to prophesy to. If I gave you the gifts of healing, nobody to heal. If I gave you miracles, there's nobody to perform a miracle on. Uh, if I gave you the gift of the word of wisdom, nobody to speak it to. He said, you go out and you stand before sighing, dying, crying humanity and preach my word and I'll be there to help you. So, so, I decided to have a great campaign and act like a great big preacher. And so I got the preachers together and I had a campaign over in Pasadena, Texas. And I mean, we had Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians, we had Pentecostals, we had everybody come. And it was amazing. And I got up and I just told them that I was saved and full of the Holy Ghost and that God was going to help me cast out devils and lay hands on, my si on the sick and they were going to be healed. And I had the uh, power of God and whatever God said in the Bible I could do. And, uh, and, and the most amazing thing to me is they believed me and they came down the aisle came, and they, they lined them up that's what we had heard we were supposed to do and lined them up you know and brought them up on the up on the platform I looked at that line it went way down all the way down out the door I didn't know how far it went out there but I tell you it like to scared me to death and 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 so I, I just well well I, I was into it then the devil said well that's what you get that's what you get for getting mixed up with them well but you know God's always there and the first man they brought out to me was a man about 30 years old and uh, he was totally dumb unable to speak and, and and when I asked what was wrong with him they said he's never been able to talk and I had butterflies in my stomach and I thought oh Lord it looks like I could have started with arthritis or something like that but you know God knows how to get things done and you know the Holy Ghost reminded me that I had power over all devils he said in my name you will cast out devils he said, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And you know, I looked at that man and spoke to that devil in him and I said, you dumb devil, you come out of him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I put that microphone up to him and said in his good ear, say, thank you, Jesus. And he said, thank you, Jesus. And I tell you, the meeting was on. Now, God will confirm his word if we preach it, whether any gifts operate or not. God will just keep his word. And our business is to preach his word. But in the same way, God does impart certain gifts in our life and they become to, begin to rise to the front. Now, the thing I'm encouraging you tonight to do is watch what God's doing in your life. See which gifts he began to, uh, begins to manifest and then cultivate that. Stir that up. Don't be a hog and run after everything else. Pay attention to what God is doing in your life. A lot of people, God will begin to work on them with the gift of tongues or the gift of the word of wisdom or the gift of miracles or the gift, and they'll just say, thank you, Jesus, but I'd like to have a little more. Now, if you could just get this going for me. It says, stir up the gift of God. Meditate on these things. Give thyself wholly to them. I often say this, one thing about Oral Roberts is that when he saw a gift operating in his life, he cultivated it and stirred our generation by the power of God. He never tried to get off in any other area. He stayed right with that. And, and you know, if you begin to see something begin to come forth in your life, some manifestation, pray over it, fast over it, cultivate it, look to it, meditate on it, and say, God, I appreciate it. I thank you, Lord. Now, you know, some people have God by the Holy Ghost begin to move in them and they give a message or two in tongues in the church or a prophecy or a interpretation or some manifestation like that and you know it may be in the next service they'll miss the service and be out in some worldly place maybe looking at a picture show 
Brother, that's a tragedy. If you got any spiritual things working in your life, you better cultivate them. You better be in church where God can use you and out on the street where God can use you. Don't you give yourself over to some worldly attitude and action. Cultivate what God is doing in your life. It sure does get quiet when I talk about the picture shows. Are you picture show goers? <laughs> but you know, I just, it's been rubbing me the wrong way later, Brother Claude. I've been finding a lot of people claim to be full of the Holy Ghost just getting out in places I wouldn't even go as a Baptist. And how much more people, if God in this dark hour begins to, begins to vibrate our spirits and move by his Holy Ghost, how much more should we separate ourselves and consecrate ourselves and stir up that gift? Now, I don't have all night to preach, so I'm going to have to leave some of my thoughts out here, but I, I'll just kind of hurry along and give you be sure I get around to some things that I do want to say. Well, now, now, you're going to make some mistakes. Somebody said, what if that fellow hadn't have spoken when you said, come out, you demon? Well, I, I'd have said he didn't get healed. I'd have said, I'll try again another time or come back tomorrow. After all, brother, every time you move in God, you have a chance to fall on your face you got to have faith and you got to not worry about what people are going to think. Amen. Amen. Don't be afraid to say, I missed it, I'm wrong, I'm sorry, it didn't work, I'll have to do better next time. Now the gift that began to operate in my life from the very beginning was the gift of the word of knowledge. And, and I didn't even know what it was. I was praying for all these things. When one came along, I, I didn't even know what it was. See, I was just a Baptist. Remember one time I preached on 1 Corinthians chapter 12 in the Central Baptist Church of Baytown, Texas, on the gifts. Man, I tell you, you talk about getting confused. I talked, about, I, I talked in that chapter and I relegated healings to the doctor, prophecy to preaching, and uh, I, I ran out of something to say about some of them and I got so confused. I said, folks, I don't know what this means. <laughs> I said, it says it's, for, it's got something for everybody, but I don't understand it. I remember how confused I was. So is it any wonder when I began to see these things operate in my life, I didn't recognize them. Now, the gift of the word of knowledge is when God imparts some knowledge to you that you otherwise would not know. You just suddenly know it. You don't know how you know it except God told you. But I'll tell you, God can tell you. But you see, I, I, when it first happened, I remember I was in uh, Florida and I was sitting on the platform of a church going to give my testimony as a Baptist how I received the Holy Ghost. And while I was sitting there, something just like a television set went in front of me and I saw a jawbone and a tooth on the jawbone. Looked like it is dug up out of the grave. Brother, if you don't think that'll set a little Baptist heart to take it. <laughs> Sitting there quietly ready to preach your little sermon or give you a testimony and see something like that float by. <laughs> I thought, dear me, what is it? This is the end of side one. Please turn your cassette over at this time. Somehow, something told me it had to do something with that, that service. So I got up there just as ignorant as a, as a, uh, as a Methodist in, a, in the Vatican, you know. But, uh, uh, but you know, as I, got, I said, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to ask something before I preach. Is there anybody here that's got any, 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 any jaw trouble? <laughs> Nobody had any jaw trouble. I said, anybody got, here got any gum trouble? Face trouble? Head trouble? Man, I was getting desperate. And in my desperation, a fellow said, uh, stood up, or a woman, I've forgotten which, she said, uh, they said, uh, I've got a jaw tooth wedged to my jaw bone. If that's, I said, that's it. 
Somebody said, did she get healed? I've forgotten. I was so glad to find her. I don't know what happened to her. <laughs> but I didn't know. You see, God was beginning to move this way. Now, it's funny now, but it wasn't funny then. And I don't mean to be light-hearted about the gifts of God, but you know, we learn by doing. And I still didn't understand. I came back home and I went to a church with A.C. Sorrell just packed out down there in Houston. I was sitting there right in the center section like a good little Baptist. Didn't know that preacher, didn't know anybody in the church. I was sitting there and so helped me God. Something passed right in front of my eyes, two lungs with a spot on one of them. Said A.C., I said, I just saw two lungs go by. I didn't know what I was going to do with them. I'm talking about how we learn. How we learn. He said, uh, he said, get up and tell the people. I said, oh no, I'm not getting up in this Pentecostal church. And then I was ashamed. And I said to myself, I said, now Lord, if you want me to tell this, you have that preacher call on me. He didn't know me. And he turned as soon as I said that in my heart. He said, uh, said right there, said, uh, is your name John Osteen? He said, I'd like to have you say something. I got up and told that. You know, a woman jumped up. She said, I've been to the doctor today to look at my x-rays, and that's the very thing. And we prayed for her, for God to heal her. Praise God. God knows what he's doing. And, and I've seen this. I've seen this work. I've seen God bless. And it's not something to magnify you or, or to lift you up. It's something to give you direction. It's not something to talk about and brag about. It's something whereby the Holy Ghost works in our life. Now, what am I going to do? Go over yonder and sit in a dance hall and, and think about it? What am I going to do, spend hours before gun smoke and, and, uh, and uh, uh, well, I haven't looked in so long, I don't know what's on now. Andy, get your gun or whatever else is on there. What am I going to do, fill my mind with all this trash and, and all of the garbage of the world and, and just before it closes, get the 10, 10 o'clock news and get all of the murders and the rapes and the war and then lie down and say, Lord, help me to sleep sweetly. Is that what I'm going to do? No, I tell you, brother, we've got to get alone. We've got to pray. We've got to fast. We've got to thank God for the move of the Holy Ghost. We've got to cultivate what God has put in our lives. And I've seen this work so wonderfully, so many times God has blessed. He's warned me. He's saved my life. He's helped me. He's done many things because I just majored on, on developing and meditating on what God is trying to do. Now, that's not, that's not the only thing that ever operates in my life, but that was one of the first things. But you see, we ought to, we ought to cultivate. We ought to cultivate. Oh, when we go to church or when we go out to serve, you don't just have to go to church to be used of God. But when you get up in the morning and say, Oh, God, I remember now you have used me in this gift or that gift or prophecy or something. Oh, God, today, I want to keep my heart clean. I want to pray. I want to seek your face. I want to be ready to be used of you wherever I am today. And you'll be surprised. I'll tell you, we were, I'll tell you one time how I missed it. We were in a, we were in a department store. And my wife was spending all my money. And, uh, and while she was talking to this sales lady, the Holy Ghost said to me, something's wrong with that woman's leg. It didn't look like there's anything wrong with her. You know, first thing we do is just looking around, see if you can see. But God will tell you things you can't see. And, and, and I had a deep impression that I ought to pray for her uh, because of her leg. Saleswoman. But I didn't do it. I didn't tell her what the Lord told me. If I'd have just walked up there and said, you know... I don't know whether you're a Christian or not, but I'm a Christian, and the Lord knows everything. And, and, I, and I'd just like to encourage you that he loves you. In fact, he loves you so much that he told me something was wrong with your leg. And I'd like to pray for you. Well, you say, what if nothing was wrong with her leg? You'd say, excuse me, I missed it. <laughs> but you know I didn't do that. But finally, I just kind of sidled up to her after we all got... I said, uh, you know... Uh, have you ever had any kind of disease or anything? Have you, you know, just ask, oh, yes, she began to tell me all about her legs. Something, something happened to her. See, she really, but I didn't have enough faith then to pray for her and tell her God told me anything, you see. I just, I, I just uh, talked it out and went on. But God can work in a department store. God can work in the grocery store. God can move by the Holy Ghost and reveal things to you that you need to know. 
I remember one time I was in South America, and uh, I had uh, I had two services that day. One was in a in a Spanish church at eleven o'clock, and at twelve thirty I was to go to a Trinidadian church uh, where the black people from the Isle of Trinidad were to uh, uh, gather. And so uh, I I was praying in my hotel room there. In fact, I went in the bathroom, closed the door, and prayed. And as I was praying there, suddenly I began to intercede in tongues. It's just like uh, just a just a rapidity of tongues, just real real fast, you know. And when this happens to me, I'm just caught up in the spirit. I mean, it's, you just don't pray that way ordinarily in tongues. It just, it, it just comes like a machine gun. It just, you just lift it up almost like in a trance, you know, but you're fully aware of what's going on. Well, this hit me, and I just began to pray and praise in tongues, and I knew God uh, was going to uh, intercede there uh, a while through me, you know. And while I was praying in tongues, suddenly the word of knowledge uh, began to be revealed to me, and also uh, by revelation, God began to show me something. I saw sitting, standing before me, uh, a black woman. Uh, if I had seen her on the streets of Caracas, I, I would have recognized her. And, uh, and as I, I watched her, I didn't realize I was seeing a vision. I thought it was in my imagination, you see. It's almost in the same area. You know, it's just a spiritual uh, thing that you have to take by faith anyway. But anyway, I, I watched this while I was just praying in tongues with a, a real fervor in my spirit. And as I watched this black woman, suddenly I, watched, I saw and one of her eyes just crossed. And then I realized that I was seeing something from the Lord. And as I watched her, directly a python, a snake, just curled right up in front of her, just like this. Just like that. And the Holy Ghost said to me, This woman has a child that is crippled in its legs. It is caused by witchcraft in the home. Cast out the spirit, and I will heal the child. Well, you know, I just couldn't wait to get to, through at that little, those little brown-skinned people and get over to those black skin. I, I just said, well, I love these little, uh, these little brown-skinned folks that I'm going to preach to at 11, but I'm looking forward to that 1230 service when I know God's going to do something. So I went to the Spanish people, you know, and we were on the platform and we were singing choruses, you know, and I was looking at those golden, beautiful faces and uh, thinking about those black ones I was going to see. And I looked to my right, and right in the midst of those golden faces was the blackest little woman you ever saw. And one eye crossed the very woman that I saw in the vision. There wasn't a child sitting beside her. I didn't run out and grab her by the nap of the neck and begin to shake her. I went ahead and preached the word of God. Any revelation you got, it'll hold a little while. Let God's word, you don't have to jump up in the middle of my sermon or somebody else's sermon and do something on the spot. Let the word of God go forth. Amen. You can hold what you got. Somebody said, I just couldn't help myself. Let me tell you something. You can help yourself. It's the Holy Ghost. So I just went ahead and preached the word of God. And after it was over, I, I said uh, to the interpreter, of course, I said, would that little woman over that little black woman stand up? She stood up. Wasn't, wasn't a child near. I said, the Holy Ghost told me that you had a child that was crippled in its legs. I said, uh, is that so? And she said, yes, I do. Well, that was one hurdle, thank God. And so I said, would you come down here? And she uh, went out and her child was over here in this section and she got her child and the child walked kind of like she was in braces like that she wasn't in braces but her legs were still kind of stiff she walked sideways like that bending from side to side and uh, so uh, when they stood there <clears throat> I told uh, her in the congregation the rest of the revelation from God I said uh, God said this child was this got this way because of witchcraft in the home and that woman that woman got so excited, she began to say, no, 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 no. Of course, she was a good spirit-filled woman, Christian woman, full of the Holy Ghost. And, uh, and I, I said, well, now God told me that it was because of witchcraft in the home. No, 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 no. She got violent. Not angry, but I mean she was definite that she wanted me to understand. I said, well, you all sing a chorus. And I'll get down here and talk to her, and we'll find out who's right, God or her. And so while they were singing, I got down and I said to the interpreter, I said, now, little darling, I said, I didn't call you a witch. I didn't say you were mixed up in witchcraft, but you tell me the, the story. 
She said, Brother Osteen, she thought I was referring to her that she was practicing witchcraft, you see. She said, Brother Osteen, my husband was a spiritualist medium communicating with the so-called dead with all kind of incantations and we lived in that hell in our lives and we had many children. All of them hated what he did except this child. She loved it and she got crippled while he was still with us and he's been gone many years. Don't tell me God doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm glad to report to you that I cast out the demon and that child walked normally. Praise God, healed by the power of Jesus Christ. Let's lift our hands and praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I could go on and on and on giving you illustration after illustration explaining to you how uh, God has blessed in this area of my life. But I'm saying this, it's up to me to stir up this gift, to be aware of it, to be keenly sensitive uh, to, the, to the moving of God, to, to tune my ear, to be ready at the slightest uh, moment that God would want to get my attention so I'll understand what he, most of the time, uh, God's dealings with me is just like a little atom with perfume in it you just give it a little puff you know and you can smell it a moment but it's gone if you don't catch it right then it's gone you got to be sensitive and latch on to it right then while God's talking to you now many of you people sitting, sitting in front of me you've never had a spiritual enablement you have the Holy Ghost but you've never had anything uh, at all move in your life. I say to you, fast and pray. I say to you, don't you settle down on your knees. Don't you settle down and give up uh, to a life like that. God wants to thrill you and bless you and feed others by using you as a channel of his divine supernatural gifts. And if God has been moving in your life in a certain area, he says here, stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Stir it up. Think about it. Meditate about it. Read about it. Read everything you can find in the Bible. Talk to others who have that operating in their lives. Wait upon God and let God begin to use you more and more. And then when he does use you, find out where you missed it and didn't, and, and didn't miss it. Analyze it. Lie down at night and meditate on, on the day's activity. And you will learn to grow in the gifts of God. And who knows, one mighty gift, one mighty gift, will change the course sometime of a person's life, a family's life, the life of a church, or a person, or even a nation. I wonder tonight if you're glad that you have the gifts of the Lord working in your life. How many of you ever had a manifestation at all? Would you put up your hand? Have you taken that lightly? Does it thrill you? Do you know that you're rich? Do you know that you are rich to have God move and thrill your human flesh and bless others through you? You are going to have to be different. You can't wag your tongue and criticize everybody. You can't have ugly, evil, spirit, spiritual attitudes in your life. You can't enjoy the pleasure of carrying grudges and being ugly. And losing your temper. You can't leave your Bible and just visit it once in a while and leave prayer until you're ready to pray. You've got to cultivate yourself and cultivate that gift that's in you. And as you fan the flames, as you fan the flames, you know many people who have gifts operating in their life, they're just crying and praying and walking the floor wanting God to lead them and open doors and yet they'll just leave that gift dormant in their life. You know what opens doors? Not degrees, not college education. The thing that opens doors is the operation of the gifts of God in our lives. You know, ever since I got the Holy Ghost, nobody ever asked me if I went to college or seminary. They don't even care whether I'm ordained or not. All they want to know is, can they get some help? Can they get some help? And I tell you, my brother, if you will cultivate, my sister, my brother, if you will cultivate the spiritual gifts of God in your life, 
you will never lack because humanity is suffering, sighing, crying, and dying, and they're looking for somebody who can be used of God, and they'll surely welcome you if you let God use you in that manner. Well, I think that's long enough and a pretty good sermon. It's not a $50,000 sermon, but it's pretty good, isn't it? Let's lift our hands and praise God for the Holy Ghost and the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Oh, to be his hand extended. Let us sing tonight as we stand, oh, to be his hand extended. Do you want to be his hand extended? How many of you do? Say amen. Amen. All right, let's sing it with all of our heart. Praise God. Mean oh. it from the depths of our soul. Oh, to be his hand extended, reaching out to the oppressed. Let me touch him, let me touch Jesus. Reach out to the Lord, reaching out to the oppressed. Let me touch him, let me touch Jesus, so that others may know and be blessed. Oh, dear friends, as we close tonight, if you have a desire to be a servant, to serve people, to wash their feet, to shine their shoes, to hold up their hands, if you have a desire to help this needy generation, Not as a big shot preacher or a big star, but just a servant. Jesus will use you. He'll use you. He'll use you. Do you want to help people? Do you want to help people? Begin with those immediately around you where you live. Begin in your neighborhood. Begin in your family. Help people. Say, oh God, use me to help people. Help people through me. Accept his gifts even tonight. And when you arise in the morning, and then magnify God and give him the glory for what he's done. Let's tell Jesus we love him. Thank you, Jesus.